Well, I want to I'll draw your attention to something that's coming up next week that you can take part in uh, to honor a Baldwin officer, Michael Flamian. You remember that he was shot in the line of duty back in July of this year uh, during a traffic stop. And uh, he has been, uh, he's now facing a lifetime recovery uh, from that incident. Uh, right now, we're joined by uh, Chief Kevin Scott of the Baldwin Police Department, who's in studio with us right now. Chief, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's great to see you. Glad you could be with us today. Yeah, this is a great experience. I've never okay. been here before. Oh, that's right. You haven't been down before, I have, have you? I have not been down here before, and I just want to say that I am a Guns N' Roses fan. So are you really? Absolutely. Okay. We'll get you. Good music. It's funny, my my my. Uh, phone has lit up since I announced that we're going to be giving away tickets. I have lots of friends, apparently, who are Guns N' Roses fans. So, uh, Tim Elwell, we need to get the chief on the list if there are any extra tickets. That's How about right. that? We'll keep that in mind. That's awesome. Um, it's great to see you, and thanks for all you do out in the ball one, and thanks for all that you've been able to do for, for Officer um, Flamian so far. Well, I appreciate it. You know, it's it was, a, it was a difficult time when Mike got shot on July 8th. Uh, the Baldwin Police Department and the city of Baldwin, we entered into uncharted waters. But it has been uh, the leadership of the city, the police department, and just the whole entire community coming together out there that has just made this immense challenge much easier to deal with. And Mike is just so loved out there, and they appreciate his sacrifices. I've never seen anything like this anywhere in the country, the outpouring of support that we had here for Officer Flamion. Baldwin is just an unbelievable community. Well, how's, how's he doing? Mike is still medically the same. He has the paralysis basically from the neck down. Um, he has uh, is breathing on with the assistance of a ventilator on his wheelchair at night. His spirits are unbelievable. Do you know, here's a guy, his sole focus, the only thing he's concerned about after sustaining the injuries that he has sustained is coming back to work and being a policeman again. Is that not incredible? Wow. I mean, he is a true hero. He went to Colorado for a while, correct? He did. So was that for rehab? It was. So initially after the shooting, he was stabilized here at Mercy in St. Louis. They did an unbelievable job with him. And he was moved to Craig Hospital in Inglewood, Colorado for rehabilitation. And I want to tell you, this place out there is amazing. I've been out there twice. And the things that they do out there, it's unbelievably incredible. Um, I assume it's because the it's a higher elevation, uh, it's easier for him to breathe, things like that. Is, that. is that why they rehab there? Well, he had two choices. One was the the uh, center in Atlanta, the Shepherd oh. Center in Atlanta. Okay. And the uh, the other was uh, Craig Hospital in Colorado, and it, it really was his choice. And uh, he's an outdoorsman. He loves the mountains, and so it really wasn't much of a choice. That's where he was going. He, he made that decision. Um, I. I tell you what's impressed me and I, you you alluded to it a minute ago is the the outpouring of support whenever there's been a fundraiser of any sort and there and there have been many of them that have taken many different forms i know the rain they held one at the range uh, all the restaurants out there have participated some of them giving up a hundred percent of their profits for his benefit um that, that's got to just fill your heart with with uh, joy to see you, that you know it does i mean listen um Mike doesn't see himself as a hero or deserving of any of this. He's a very humble individual. But American policemen every single day kiss their families goodbye, put on their uniforms, and go to a job that they know is inherently dangerous. And that's what he did on July 8th. And the people of that community recognize the sacrifice that he made for them. It's well put. Um, in, the, in the light of what we've seen around the country— uh, I know that this particular case is not one where somebody set out that morning, we don't believe, I'm not asking you to get into the details of the case if you can't, where this guy set out to target a police officer that day. Um, but how difficult is it for you as a chief to counsel your officers on what in a lot of cases these days has been a tearing down of the respect for uh, law enforcement? Well, we started that process almost immediately within hours after Mike was shot. It was a challenge. How are we going to address this? And we pulled the entire staff together that afternoon and emphasized one person and one person only is responsible for the injuries to Mike Flamion. And we are going to conduct ourselves in a professional manner. We have a job to do. This is, the citizens of this community need us here. And we're not taking anything that happened to Mike out on anyone. Right. Yeah, it's, a good, it's a good point. Um, However, what happened to him drives home the danger 
that police officers all over the country face every day. And I, you know, I don't think most of us who strap on a pair of headphones for a living or uh, you know go to an office to work respect the the amount of risk that your officers take in return for what is oftentimes not a great deal of pay and they they do a lot of volunteering and they do a lot of things and work second jobs to make a living that's where my respect comes in for police officers well you have to have a certain level of dedication to do this job and this is a reminder that what happened to mike on july 8th can happen anywhere any community No one's immune to this. A random act of violence, a random assault can occur anywhere at any time. It's not indicative of the safety of the uh, safety level of any community. And so this has been a refocus for us because police officers do come in day in and day out. And we do develop a certain level of complacency. And we've had to refocus ourselves on what's important and, and how we conduct ourselves. And listen, we've taken steps behind the scene. Uh, to try to ensure that our officers are safer when they respond to calls. We've encouraged two-man units. We've encouraged or made it almost mandatory two-unit responses to calls. Uh, We're vetting callers more carefully as the calls come into communications. But the one thing that I can't ever do, Mark, is I can never guarantee a wife, a child, a mother, a father, that their police officer is going to be safe. This is a very dangerous profession. And the people that show up every day are dedicated to it and love doing it, or they would not be able to do it. Chief Kevin Scott is our guest from the Baldwin Police Department. No such thing as a routine traffic stop. There's, is there? no, there's nothing routine about this job at all. Wow. So d- we've seen this outpouring of support for Mike Flamian. Um, on next week, he, you're going to have an opportunity for the public out there in the Baldwin area to show up at the point. You've, you've moved a regularly scheduled council meeting over there so that you have more space. So tell people what's coming up next week. So uh, in the middle of November, Mar- or, uh, Mike received the St. Louis Area Medal of Valor, and that's sponsored by the St. Louis Area Police Chiefs Association and the Crusade Against Crime of America. He was nominated and received the Medal of Valor. So when we did the ceremony, obviously Mike was still in Colorado. So we accepted that medal on his behalf and presented it to his father at the time. His father, Pat, returned that medal to us, and we're going to represent that medal to him on Monday night, um, the 12th. And we've moved the Board of Aldermen meeting, regularly scheduled Board of Aldermen meeting, from the board chambers at 300 Park Drive to the point at Baldwin Commons, which is at number one Baldwin Commons Circle. It's going to be done in the gymnasium, and we're going to be able to accommodate upwards of 500 people, anywhere from 500 to 800 people. And so this gives us an opportunity to recognize him, to have the people in the community to come out that have supported him so diligently so that they can see him. We also are going to award him the Law Enforcement Purple Heart that night. Uh, you know, because of Mike's condition, we're we're concerned about his medical status, and so we're not gonna we're not gonna let him linger in that facility. We're gonna bring him in. We're gonna do the presentations, uh, and then we're gonna move him back out. Uh, sure. So it's not gonna be a meet and greet type scenario, but we do want the public to come see him. And I really want to send a message to Flamians and to Mike that Baldwin loves him, and that his sacrifice was not in vain. Wow. It, it's a it's a term i'm guessing you're gonna have a packed house i'm assuming I'm, you're assuming yeah i'm, <laughs> I'm guess, assuming we yeah, are yes yeah that's fantastic because uh i know that the, the the chamber and all the businesses out there in the community i understand you had so much food brought into the uh to the um to your offices there right after this happened you guys had to finally ask people to quit bringing it didn't you we did you know it was there was so much food in there we it was basically stacked five six feet high in pizza boxes and and everything else that we uh, we ended up the law enforcement agencies that responded to assist us we shipped some of that food to their facilities as well so and it just kept coming day after day after day cards and letters and and food and well wishers and you know that was one of the reasons why we did that open house within three or four weeks after Mike got shot it's kind of unheard of you know a policeman gets shot police department does an open house but right. there were three distinct things that we were trying to do there one. Mike, uh, his wife Sarah was there and his parents were there, and we wanted to send a message to them and let them see how much the community supported them. 
we also wanted to take an opportunity to thank the community. You know, I can hang a banner on the building and put something on Facebook saying thank you, but I needed these people to come into my building so that I could embrace them and tell them thank you and how much we appreciate the support. And the third thing, and not any less important, is the fact that it's a healing process for the officers. What they do on a daily basis is negative. They respond to negative situations day in and day out. And you do lose sight of the fact that the majority of the public does appreciate what you do for them. And so we lined the entire main floor of the building with our policemen. And as the public came in, the public got to embrace the policemen and talk to them. And so it was part of the healing process for the officers as well. Very good. So Monday night to 12th at the Baldwin Point Commons out in Baldwin, uh, they're going to have this this Board of Aldermen meeting where they'll, they'll do this presentation for Officer Flamian. And uh, the public's obviously welcome to attend. And you have a capacity of about 500, right? Yeah, anywhere from five yeah. to 800. We're obviously concerned about parking. And so we'll have officers on the lot to try to try to help mitigate any issues out there. But uh, there will be some city business conducted at the first part of the meeting. And so but everybody will need to be everybody that wants to see the presentation will need to be in the gym no later than about 650. The meeting starts at seven. Again, there'll be some city business conducted at the beginning, uh, just short. Uh, a short scenario there, and then the the presentations will be backloaded at the end of the meeting. Chief Kevin Scott, g- give my best to, to Officer Flaming and his family, and, and you've always got our support here for your dedication of uh, of your department and all your officers, well, all the officers that listen to this show. Yeah, we so. uh, we greatly appreciate everything that 97.1 has done for us and all the support that you've given us, and God bless you. You bet. Kevin, Chief, uh, Chief uh, Kevin Scott, thank you so much for your time. We're going to go to a break. 314-969-9797. You're listening to The Mark Cox Show. The Mark Cox Show on FM News Talk 97.1, 98.7, and AM 